Okay, I'm very sick. I have like the worst cold of my entire life. So I thought I would go ahead and make a video right now. Because it's a totally good idea and not a terrible disaster. Bobble Rob just did his best and most disappointing movies of 2017. But he hardly saw any because he's living in shitty Switzerland. <laughs> so I thought I'd jump into the mix this year. Okay, here's the movies I thought were good. My Friend Dahmer. Did you see that? It's based on a comic book, Bobble Rob. Based on a comic book by a real dude in Ohio who was actually high school friends with Jeffrey Dahmer. And I gotta tell you, whoever the actor kid was that played Dahmer was pretty damn good. It really was like right living right in his damn face the whole movie so you can't fake the funk on that one okay bob rob's got a podcast where he and his mom talk about movies because she sees every movie with an infinity pass and i got that's how i saw all these movies i got a wild i got that pass that lets you see a movie every day for like nine bucks a month Okay, so another one that Bobble Rob's mom saw was called Only the Brave. And Bobble Rob was like, that sounds like a movie for Trump supporters. And probably they love this movie, but so did I. Because it starts out for like the first 15 minutes is super corny. And then it gets so good. And it's based on a true story about firefighters. They were the first hotshot team from Granite Mountain. And they all, spoiler, tons of spoilers coming in this whole video but they all fucking died except for one of them and it is so fucking sad for all the families and they were real and Jennifer Connelly's in it and she's got horses dude and it's like about recovering from addiction and I'm into that okay Pixar's new movie out this year was Coco and it's about following your dreams but not forgetting your family and the importance of family. And also, man, shit's getting so postmodern lately because it's all about deconstructing, like, the hyper-masculine ideal man. And that, like, you know, just like, I will come back to this later, but that, like, you gotta question your heroes, dude, because, like, it ain't good to just be the lone dog out ahead of the pack. You gotta respect the pack. I've had a lot of day quilt. Lady Bird. Sorry, but it was a good fucking movie. And it was like the same time that I was a senior in high school was when this girl who's Lady Bird in the movie is going through it. So I'm like, oh yeah, fashions I remember. It also at the end has like the going to the airport rom-com trope where it's like you gotta rush to the airport because they're leaving but it's with a mom and daughter and I feel like I've never seen that in a movie and I just think mother-daughter relationships aren't focused on enough they're very complicated and I just think it and there was the one thing I really extra loved about this movie was there wasn't any like dragging on exposition like everything we're seeing we're just blasting right into the middle of it how you would if you were just peeking into somebody's life like it wasn't you know all this time spent on background explaining things you know and there was a lot of like little moments that just was, almost felt like a documentary because it just felt like such a slice of life I heard some criticism of this movie was that the kid was too much of a dick, but fuck, if you find a teenager that's not a dick, then you found a robot. Okay, here's one that I haven't been hearing on anyone's best of list. Atomic Blonde with Charlize Theron. This movie was so good. Charlize Theron kicks everybody's ass and then has lesbian sex with some French lady. I don't know. I didn't follow the plot at all. I don't care about plots when it's all like spies and action and shit. Don't care. You know it's not based on facts, man. So point is, the lighting was awesome. The music was jamming. Who doesn't want to think about being in Germany in the 80s? It was fucking 
rocking. Okay, loved it. Lesbians. Okay. Okay, back on our whole postmodern trip. Star Wars, new Star Wars. Bobble Rob had this one in most best and most disappointing both. And I really wasn't disappointed by it at all. The new Star Wars was rocking my world exactly with some fucking Poe Dameron or whatever. It was fucking around the whole last movie. Fucking around. This time he fucks everything up. There's one whole plot line where fucking Finn and Rose are going to do some caper finding motherfucking Codebreaker dude. Don't find him. Fuck everything up and it's just a big dead end that gets a bunch of people killed. Because they weren't fucking doing the deal, listening to the motherfuckers, think they know best, and have to run and do their thing. Sure enough, that was the whole point of that. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I loved it. I didn't care about the milk monsters. I thought that part was cool. Okay, other ones I loved. Call Me By Your Name, Army Hammer, doing it with this twink, Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet, who in this movie is motherfucking speaking French, speaking Italian, playing guitar, playing piano, and then having some pretty hot scenes with Army Hammer. But man, for as focused on the gay sex as this movie is, like, the whole point is that they're gay dudes fucking each other. You really don't see very much explicit sex with these guys. And th that kind of disappointed me. There's literally moments where they are about to get it on and they pan the camera out the window to a tree. And that's my one criticism, but honestly, it still was very moving. Just, you know, I feel like a lot of gay movies are like, you know, forbidden love and they have to hide it and it's all a big deal. But they didn't focus so much on the taboo part of it as it was like about a teenager who hasn't been in a relationship and like falling in love for the first time. It just was a really hot, cute, I cried. It was a moving movie. I feel like you really feel the loss when, because the army hammer then has to leave. And you really feel the luck, the kid, the sadness of the kid. Okay, there was another weird movie that had Casey Affleck, who were like, fuck you, and I get that. But man, this movie was pretty damn good, and it was kind of early in the year, and I feel like people forgot about it. But it was called Ghost Story, where he's straight up in a sheet, just fucking traveling through time. It goes, he dies. Rooney Mara's his wife or girlfriend or whatever she's very sad and he she takes like writes something on a piece of paper and sticks it like in the wall of their house and then leaves and you're just watching the ghost of him trying to get to this paper for fucking decades and shit it was fucked up it was sad and it was really weird I feel like I haven't seen a movie like that ever okay then I got sharing first place is Get Out. Bob Rob had this in his list too. It was really fucking good. I saw it several times in the theater before I had my magic pass. Because I was like, damn. And I feel like people aren't talking about the music that was in it. Some of the music was scored especially for the, for the movie. And the music was really on point. And... It just was a really bizarre, interesting take on racism in America and all the line symbolism, how the white, um, you know, couple, the family's house has all these lines everywhere. It was weird and interesting. Great movie. Everybody should see it. Um, and then my other number one shared with that is the Florida Project about, um, like a mom and kid living in a hotel outside of fucking Disney World in Florida with all these other people that are living in poverty and it's another one where it's like you're just blasted right into the middle of what's going on and there's a story there too that is progressing but it feels almost like um even though it's like a fictional narrative it feels like a documentary because of how you're just like blasted right down into the middle of these people's lives 
and really I don't think there's enough movies about people living kind of on the fringes and it was very like playful and fun with the kids for a lot of the movie but then gets devastatingly sad of course okay I'm gonna do my most disappointing in another video because I did it and then the camera turned off Got a lot of pets. Katie and I also have a kitten now. She's hiding, but maybe she'll be in the next video. Okay, pray for me.